So you just blend it and you keep heating it until it becomes like velvety, smooth. All right, for this um, homemade queso, you can use um, whole milk, but if you're like me, it's nice to save the cream for ice cream and coffee cream or to make butter with. And I think that the, um, the queso turns out just as good without all the heavy cream. So I skim all the heavy cream from my milk. And this is my favorite way to skim. I just use a measuring cup um, and wait till the milk. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Let's see. The cream line. So you can see the cream line. Oh, there. Maybe you can see it. When, when I skim it so you can see. That's some heavy cream. And um, you could put that in the cheese, won't hurt anything, it'll just make it more rich. If you're doing like a, if you're doing a Trim Healthy Mama, um, you know, eating plan, you skim the cream and it becomes skim milk, then you're kind of making like a, a skim milk cheese, kind of like, um, like a no fat, and you can be used as an, in an E setting for uh, the carb, a carb meal. And it's kind of like um, the laughing cow cheese. Anyway, and if you don't have um, good raw milk, you can use store milk for this, and it would be worth doing. You know, if you can get some good quality, um, you know, organic whole milk, it would make really good cheese too, and it would make it into a um, more nutritious uh, food because you're going to be culturing it. And I'm going to pour all these in here, and I'm going to heat the milk up to 86 degrees. And I'm using such a big pot that I don't use a double boiler. Actually, I'm putting this directly on the stove because this is a humongous pot. Um, anyways, but typically if I was doing like a four gallon amount, I have like a double um, thing where I have the pot in here and I would put water in here and do a double boiler kind of thing. But anyway, this works okay. You just have to watch it carefully and make sure your temperature doesn't get too high. Make sure you don't ever scorch the bottom. So you got to do a little bit more stirring and be a little more aware um, to not burn your milk. All right, for the starter, I use a mesophilic type two. And for one gallon of milk, you need one eighth of a teaspoon. And one eighth of a teaspoon is called a dash. This is called a direct set starter. And it's not very expensive. It's a great thing to have in the freezer. It'll last you several years in the freezer. I'm doing six gallons of milk, so that's two, three, four, five, and remember I'm doing six. So I sprinkle it on the top, just like when you're making the other kind of cheese, and you need to let it rehydrate for five minutes, and then after five minutes, we're gonna stir it in. <clears throat> and I'm gonna give you a little tip on this. I don't always remember to do it, but when I do, it's great. Um, when you cut this off, don't cut it big enough where you can get a spoon in there because you don't want to contaminate all the culture that's in there. So I cut the corner and then, uh, you know, roll it up and put a little clip on it. And then I just have a Ziploc bag that I keep all my cultures in and back in the freezer it goes. So anyway, that's a really easy way to do your cultures because at 60 degrees and, um, I need to get it up to 86 degrees. And then when I get it up to 86 degrees, I'm gonna add my rennet. All right, the technique to stir milk is the same as it is with uh, any cheese making. There's two methods. One method is going up and down if you have a slotted spoon like this. You just go down and up, down and up, and you just you know do that like 20 times. Another method is to turn the milk, and I like this method. I probably do a combination of both, and the, it's a big O, and then get the temperature up to 86, and then we're going to add some rennet. Um, for one gallon, it's a pinch, which is 1 16th of a teaspoon, and you're going to need um, some water to dilute the rennet in, and you need one, <coughs> what is it, one eighth of a cup of water diluted in 1 16th a teaspoon. And this is my rennet. Uh, let's see, I got it from getculture.com and I keep it in the refrigerator in a black sock to try to keep it better longer. And I'm doing six batches, so I'm gonna do this six times. Those if you're doing six gallons. Actually, you know what, I'm doing six and a half gallons because I added half a gallon. So 
so I'm gonna put one more. But anyway, this cheese turns out so good and it freezes so good that it's like, why not do a bunch of it and then freeze it and have it for whenever you need it. So this goes back into my refrigerator um, way in the back. And when you dilute the rennet uh, in, the, in water like this before you use it, you need to dilute it right before you use it. So don't go and get it ready, you know, an hour before you use it. You need to mix it and put it in the water. And yeah, that's what I've read at least. They say it makes it not as effective. And you don't want that. So my favorite rennet is an animal rennet that's uh, in liquid form. That's been my favorite. So anyways, you're going to mix this really good. You want to get all that rennet mixed in to help the milk stop. Um, it'll keep swirling otherwise and you'll get some really weird swirls in your curd. All right. Now the milk gets uh, 12 hours of quiet time, so I take everything out. You need a tight fitting lid so the air doesn't get in there, bugs can't get in there. And um, I'm just going to leave this. It needs to be here for 12 hours, which 12 hours from now for me is like 3 in the morning. So I'm not going to do anything with it probably until 10 o'clock tomorrow when I get all my morning routine done. Um, but anyways. Um, you need to let this sit for 12 hours and then we'll be ready for the next step. Alright, it's the next morning. I want to show you what this should look like. The whey on top. I don't know if you can see that. The whey is like green, greenish. And then there's a big tub underneath and it did. It formed a really nice curd. So that's what the curd looks like. And it came away from the side of the pot. It, sh it like shrunk and went down about an inch. Anyway, that's a really good curd, so that's um, that's exactly what it should look like. And then um, if you have less milk, this will be a lot easier, but I have so much milk, and this is so heavy that I don't actually lift this up and pour it because it'll go everywhere, all over the floor and everything. So um, my system is, I have a big colander here. It's pretty big. Um, I don't know how many quarts that is. And then I have a big uh, five-gallon bucket and I've put um, one of these fancy tops on it so I can um, take the whey out to my pigs or chickens or whatever you want to feed. But I feed it to my pigs and I like it because it has a rubber gasket so I can put it on there and turn it. Anyway, I take this and then this is a pillowcase that I use only for cheese making. It's a just a old cotton pillowcase and I've it's been washed and when I wash it, I wash it separate and I bleach it. A little bit with a little bit of bleach and I turn it inside out so the cheese goes in the see the the lines are on the so anyway cheese curds can't get stuck in there and then I just uh, move this out till I move it till there's like one layer you know on the bottom and then my system is to just take a pot kitchen pot that I've washed well and I scoop up whey and curds and I just start uh, ladling ladling it into the into my colander down here and once I do enough and it starts getting um, not so heavy then I'll pour the rest but right now that's like super heavy I think one gallon of milk is like eight pounds and I have six and a half gallons in here so that's it's a lot of weight it's also a sloppy mess so it's easier to do it this way all right so now it's time to drain the cheese and um, I have one of these hooks just screwed onto the side of my cabinet <clears throat> and then I take the pillowcase wrap it around the bottom hook and then there's just a rubber band right there that I triple put on there. And you just let it gravity drip. Um, then it'll just keep dripping. I'll let this drip. Um, you're supposed to let it drip 12 hours a night, um, right before bed, uh, like 9 o'clock tonight. Um, I'll take this uh, off and have it stop dripping. And I'll probably just take this whole thing and put it in the refrigerator um, to get cold and it'll kind of slow down the fermentation 
and the, you know it won't be dripping anymore because it won't be hanging uh, and then tomorrow is when I'll do the next step um, but I won't do the next step tonight because it's just too late at nine o'clock at night um, or you could let it hang all night long tonight it'll just be um, it'll just be more solid it'll have less weight in it all right, so after it drained, and I didn't uh, take it out of the drain until the next morning, and then I was too busy that day to do anything with it, so I actually took the pillowcase and put it in a bowl with the cheese and stuck it in the refrigerator. And um, this is actually the day after that, just because I didn't have any time. So uh, I was going to show you it clumps up into one big mass, and um, I separate it kind of with my hand. And then there's two ways of doing this. You can put the pan directly on the stove or um, you can do a double boiler where there's uh, water in there and that's in a canning, it's in a canning pot with water and the canning pot has uh, the grate upside down in there. Um, when I'm lazy, I just put it directly on the stove, but then I know I'm probably going to get... Um, it might burn a little bit on the bottom because this cheese burns really easily. Um, anyways, I just separate it with my hands. Anyway, if you don't want to have a burn pot to deal with after you're done making cheese and you don't want to scrub a pot, I'd recommend a double boiler, but I don't do it all the time myself. Okay, so after you kind of get it broke up into pieces, three teaspoons of baking soda. And I'm going to times that times five because I did a lot of milk. Um, here we go. So one, two, about two and a half teaspoons per gallon. Baking soda and salt. And then I'm going to mix that a little bit uh, with a spoon just to kind of get it incorporated. And then um, when it starts heating up more, I'm going to use a, a blender with these metal uh, things on there and that's pretty important because we're gonna um, get it smooth to get it smooth you, that's a necessary step anyway so I'm just gonna kind of lightly mix this up the baking soda does like little does a pretty neat thing to this it makes it like fluffy it has like a reaction with it all right one to show you what starts happening um, right here like the it starts like having a reaction and melting you can see that it gets liquid and bubbles um, come and it always starts on the side because that's where the heat is. You really see them starting to melt there. So I think it's pliable enough where you can try the blender a little bit. Anyway, you're just going to um, mix it. And you're pretty much going to do this until it gets smooth. And if it's not warm enough, it won't work. So um, if you kind of notice it not working, then just stop and let it warm up for a little bit longer. To get warmer. I have the heat on high. And, um, but it's not directly on the bottom. It's on a grate so it doesn't uh, burn. Anyway, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Let's try blending again. It's getting close. Alright, wanted to show you what happens. It's starting to get smooth. It takes a little bit. There's still some clumps in here. It's getting um, it's getting smooth. So you just blend it and you keep heating it until it becomes like velvety, smooth. It's pretty thick, and it's not because I'm in a double boiler situation. See, it's not, uh, I can put my hand in there easily, so it's not very warm at all. Heating it until it gets smooth. It's um, probably not even at 100 degrees. I bet it's about 95 degrees. Anyway, so just uh, heat it up a little bit more. And um, uh, all the, a lot of the uh, clumps are starting to get out. So I'm gonna beat it one last time and then we'll be done. And then you can add into this um, like uh, anything you wanna add. I add usually a little bit of garlic powder, maybe a little dill and keep it really mild so you can um, do whatever you want with it later on. All 
All right, this step's optional. The cheese tastes so good by itself with just the salt. That's just a good basic, um, you know, cheese, uh, like a queso, you know, a plain queso, and that's just delicious. But if you want to add a little bit of love to it, um, my favorite seasonings are just a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and dill weed, but not too much, because you, you don't want to overpower it. It just kind of gives it a, huh, who are you? Are you Anna? And then onion, and then a little bit of dill. And this is kind of just to taste to what uh, you like for your family. You can also add a little bit of cayenne if, you, if your family's into um, a little bit of spice. But having a good basic like this is great because you can later on, this is really thick, so later on you can add a little bit of salsa and you know make it into a queso with um, some salsa. Do you need help? I'm Isabelle.